everybody, this is day 20 of Commit. Today's video is a yoga-based workout designed to tone and strengthen the body. Please like and subscribe and stick around to the end of the video where we break down a pose from today's practice. Begin in a kneeling position at the back of your mat, hands in your lap as you connect to your breath. Make your way to a tabletop position, taking the time to line yourself up as you begin to flow through cat-cow, flowing with your breath. Coming to a flat back, tighten up the core, slide the right leg straight back, pointing through the toes, send them off the left side of your mat, then rainbow over to the right. We're doing that five more times each side. Last one, return to table, slide the left leg back, rainbow the leg to each side six times. Last one, return to table. Keeping the core engaged, extend the right leg, left arm, and hold. On your next exhale, drawing elbow to knee, rounding out the back. Inhale, extend, we're doing this 10 times. We have nine more, elbow to knee, and extend. Eight more. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, last one. and return to table. Engage the core, extend the left leg, right arm, and hold. On your next exhale, elbow to knee, 10 times. Nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, last one. Return to table. Take a moment here to breathe. Tighten up the core, curl the toes under, and hover the knees. Keeping a flat back, hold it here.
On your next exhale, raising the hips to downward facing dog. Take the time to walk out the heels. We're going to be moving through plank rolls, bending the knees, sitting the hips back, and then coming forward to plank eight times. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. Last one. Return to down dog. Extend the right leg to three-legged dog. We're doing knee pulls down center three times. Drawing it in and extend. Two more. Last one. Lower the leg to down dog. Extend the left leg to three-legged dog. Knee pulls down center three times. Two more. Last one. Lower the leg to down dog. Gazing towards your hands, let's walk or hop to the front of our mat in a forward fold, hugging at the elbows in ragdoll. Allow the upper body to get heavy as we sway a little from side to side. Hands down to a halfway lift and fold. Upward salute. Hands to heart. Take a moment to breathe. We're going to be going into Sun Salutation A three times. Inhale to upward salute. Exhale forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Retain, make your way to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale to down dog. Find your breath. Walk or hop to a forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale to upward salute. Exhale, hands to heart. We've got two more. Upward salute, forward fold. Half lift. Make your way back to plank. Flow through, chaturanga, upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Find your breath. To a forward fold, half lift, forward fold, upward salute, hands to heart. One more time, upward salute, forward fold, half lift, lower down, make your way to plank, flow through, chaturanga, up dog to down dog. To a forward fold, half lift and fold. Upward salute. 
hands to heart. Take a few deep breaths here in mountain pose, taking your arms to the sides of the body, palms open. Let's begin to march the legs, bringing the knees up to at least hip height, alternating sides, moving at your own pace and with control. From here, we're going to be moving through chair pulses. Let's inhale as we lower to chair pose, arms up. Exhale to standing, hands to heart. We're doing 10. Nine more. Make sure those knees are pointing forward over the toes as we bend and not turning in towards each other. Eight. Aim to lower the hips in line with the knees if you can. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. Last one. Ending in mountain, hands to heart. Shifting your weight to the left foot, raise the right knee to a single leg mountain pose. Let's move from here to crescent lunge and back five times. Stepping it back to crescent lunge, bringing the arms up and floating the right leg forward, returning to single leg mountain. Four more times. Do whatever you need to do with your arms here to keep your balance. Three more. Two more times. And last one. Ending in a crescent lunge, arms up. Straighten up both legs, getting really, really tall in crescent lunge. We're doing lunge pulses, lowering to cactus arms five times. Four, stretch it up, three more, two, keeping that chest open, coming back up, last one, opening up to warrior two, lifting through the chest, shoulder blades down and back, get strong through the legs as we open up through that hip. On an inhale to reverse warrior pose. Clasping your hands behind your back, let's fold to the inside edge of that front leg in humble warrior, raising the arms and bowing the head. Engage the legs as you come back up, flat back. Rotate the back foot forward, returning to a crescent lunge. Float the back foot up, making your way to a warrior three pose.
Release Warrior 3 to single leg mountain, knee up. And release the leg to mountain pose. Take the time to breathe. Arms at your sides, palms open. Bringing hands to heart, shift your weight to the right, raising the left knee to single leg mountain. Stepping it back to crescent lunge, arms up, five times. Returning to single leg mountain, we have four more. Crescent lunge. Single leg mountain. Three more. Crescent lunge. To single leg mountain. Two more times. Crescent lunge. To single leg mountain. Last one. Ending in crescent lunge. Straighten up the legs getting tall. We're pulsing those lunges to cactus arms five times. Coming back up, four more. Open the heart. Three more. Two more. Last one. Open up to warrior two. Inhale to reverse warrior. Clasping your hands behind your back, lift the chest and fold to the inside edge of the front leg, bowing the head in a humble warrior, arms up. Engage the legs, make your way back up to a crescent lunge. Float the back foot up, coming to a warrior three pose. To single leg mountain, knee up. And release to mountain pose. Moving into garland pose, step your feet as wide as your mat, toes spilling off the edges, lower the hips, taking your hands to heart, arms to the insides of the knees. Let's press through our elbows to open up the hips a little bit wider, keeping the back long, chest lifted. Lower to seated and raise the heels to a half boat pose. Arms at the sides of your legs, palms facing up. Keep the chest lifted, flat back, aiming to keep the legs parallel to the mat here if you can. Lower the feet and recline onto your back. Feet hip distance apart, arms down at your sides, palms facing down. Inhale, raise the hips to a glute bridge. We're going into pulses. Exhale, lowering down almost all the way, coming back up right before your tailbone touches down. Keep it going, moving with your breath at your own pace.
Last one, lower all the way down. Draw your right knee into chest, extend the left leg out long, raise the shoulders bringing nose to knee, hands to Kali Mudra, let's twist pointing the hands off to the outer edge of the right foot. Switch your legs and twist to the left side. Four more times, back to the right, and left, keep breathing here, to the right, and left, switch again, to the right, pointing through the toes, and left, we can do this, to the right, and left. it down, hands on your knees for a rest. Let's roll up to seated without letting our toes touch down when we come up, then rolling back without letting the head touch down as we roll back. Do this a few more times as you can, really engaging the core. Bring all the way up to seated now. Find an easy, comfortable position, hands folded in your lap or open on your knees as we take a few deep breaths to finish up. of my practice, but it seems to be coming a little bit more popular today. Regardless of how you're getting into Humble Warrior, you want to think about the foot position being more similar to Warrior 1 than Warrior 2. So if you are getting there from a position where you have your toes lined up with the front edge and the long edge of your mat, going into Humble Warrior, you might want to consider turning your back foot in the same way you have it in a Warrior 1 pose. So you can get to Humble Warrior from Warrior 1 or from a more warrior two extended side angle reverse warrior, warrior kind of dance. So let's get there from warrior one to start. And remember in warrior one, our heels are lined up with each other. Deep bend through that front knee. So the first thing with humble warrior that we wanna make sure that we're doing is we're tightening up the legs and we're getting really, really strong here. There's gonna be no movement through the knees or through the ankles. We want our legs to stay in this exact same position. So tightening up really, really strong through both legs. We're starting with our arms up. We're gonna sweep them down, clasp the hands behind our back. We're gonna lift the chest as we draw the shoulders down. Good, and then we're folding from the hips. So we're leaving with the navel coming down to the inside of our front leg. So we're gonna come down to fold. Remember your legs stay exactly as they are. And once you fold it down as far as you can go, you can allow the head to hang down slightly, but you don't wanna bring those shoulders up towards your ears, you wanna keep them long. And then we're also gonna be drawing the hands up high, opening up the chest even more. So it's important here to get really, really stable through the legs. And it's even more important as we come back to the lift. So tighten up as much as you can. And then we're gonna lead with the nose, followed by the chest, release the hands, all the way up. Good. So if we're getting to Humble Warrior from a Warrior 2 position, it's just a small shift that you need to make in the back foot. And if you feel comfortable, if you have the range of motion or the mobility to do it keeping your foot as is, you can do that too. It's completely up to you. So whatever feels best in your body. So if we're going to be transitioning as we did today from a reverse warrior, we begin here. Hands clasped behind the back. And same thing. Keep the legs strong to the inside. 
So we want to avoid resting on that front leg. We really want to hold this pose as strong as possible. As in many yoga poses, in Humble Warrior, we're gonna be tightening up as well as releasing through certain areas of the body at the same time. So remember to keep your legs really, really tight. Pull those arms up high to really, really open the chest. You're gonna allow the head to just hang down, releasing tension through the neck. And we're getting long through the torso, long through the spine. So that's that lift as we come down. So that's another cue that you should give yourself as you enter this pose is lengthen up here before we fold forward. And whether you imagine your navel coming forward or your chest leading, the fold is coming from the hips. If you find exiting Humble Warrior to be particularly difficult, especially in the legs, it is okay to straighten the front leg a little bit to help you out until you can do it with your legs staying exactly as positioned when you enter. So that would look something like this. Returning to where you're transitioning to next. If it's the fold that you find difficult in Humble Warrior, you can fold the body over less. So that would look something like this. And we're still focusing on raising the arms. If you have issues with your shoulders or stability, you can bring your hands down to the mat in this pose to modify. Just make sure that you're bringing both hands to the inside of the front leg, similarly to a lizard pose. So that would look something like this. Instead of bringing the hands behind the back, you can keep them at your hip to guide the fold. And then as you lower and move that support, bring one hand down, then the other. Then lowering the body as much as you can, allow the head to release, the weight hanging down. But we're still focusing on keeping the shoulders away from the ears in this pose. We don't want to compress here. And then to release, bring one hand to your hip, then the other. 